Hello everyone, Pahamar here, and today is episode 3 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode, we are going to be looking over your mod class. In the previous episode, we went over a very basic Gradle script to build your project, uh, so I just wanted to highlight something I've done between then and now. So if we open up our build.gradle again, you will notice that we are now using Forge 10.12.2.1121. As of the time of this recording, this is the most um, up-to-date recommended build. They are currently testing some things, uh, so I wanted to make sure we used this one. So let's jump into it. Today we are going to talk about your mod class. So what is a mod class? A mod class is the core of your mod, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, what it is used for is when Forge Mod Loader, uh, which is the um, mod loader to load mods in, imagine that, uh, it scans through all of the mod files inside of the mods directory inside of Minecraft. Um, so when this is if you're playing Minecraft, this is where you drop all your jars and whatnot for all the mods. So what it does is it looks through every file it finds in there, every um, appropriate one, so a jar file and I believe zips, and it looks for classes defined as this mod class. So um, later on we'll get into it actually what defines it as a mod class. Uh, but what it is is it's a very special class uh, at a high level that tells uh, Forge Mod Loader what it needs to load, um, what it needs to do, and what code it needs to pass certain events to. So it's kind of the, uh, the central hub of your mod, so it's fairly important. So in order to do this, we need to set a file structure for this. So um, in a later episode, we're actually going to get more in depth as to where you put your textures and your various assets like sounds and models and stuff. Um, but for today's episode, we are just going to touch on uh, the very basics of the structure. So. Um, when you're making mods in Minecraft, uh, you follow a Maven style of architecture for the source directory. So um, why don't I just show you what that means, because you may not be familiar with it. So under Let's Mod Reboot, we will be adding a new directory called source. Inside of source, we're adding another directory called main, so source main. And then for main, we're going to add a Java directory. And we are going to add a res resources directory. Oh, resources should actually be a child of main. So your source, main, and then under main, you'll have Java and resources. From here on out, you're actually going to start having your um, package uh, classes under Java. So what does that mean? So let's load up build.gradle, and we'll see that our group is com dot pahamar dot let's mod reboot so under java we will do com dot pahamar let's mod reboot we will mark the java folder as a source root so now if we flip to the packages we can actually see com dot pahamar let's mod reboot very cool huh Okay, so we got com.pahamar.letsmodreboot. Now we need to add our first class. So in here we're going to do new Java class. And I like to name my mod classes the same as the mod itself, so let's mod reboot. You can see it's already in the package com pahamar let's mod reboot. Delete the auto generated uh, comments, and there we go. So now we have an empty class. What more do we need to do? Now we need to add the at mod annotation. So see here, it's defined under this package here, CBW mods FML common. So this is a uh, FML class. And if we actually, in IntelliJ, you can click on it, hit control B, and that'll take you to the source. Here is the source code for what is inside the mod annotation. Annotation is a way to kind of describe something with more detail. So here you can see these are the various things we can set. So we can set the mod ID, the mod name, the version, dependencies, all kinds of other stuff. You can actually see in the structure here, all the different things you can set. 
we really only need for a very basic one, we really only need to worry about mod ID, name, and version. So how do we set that? Come back to let's mod reboot, and you do it like this. Mod ID equals let's mod reboot name equals let's mod reboot and version equals and you're going to want the same version as you've got inside of your build gradle here so uh, this one here 1.7.2-1.0 there we go now we have identified this class uh, as being a mod class, and when Minecraft starts up, Forge Mod Loader will load this mod. So just to show that we can do it, let us run Minecraft. And we should see it show up in the list. So here you can see four mods loaded. If we actually click on mods here, we'll see Let's Mod Reboot. There's no other information here. We'll get into the MC Mod info file later that actually allows you to specify things in here, but you can see we've loaded it. So now that we have our very empty and basic mod class, uh, what more is there to do? Now I'm gonna teach you about the concept of the different phases in which a mod loads. So, um, when Forge Mod Loader comes along and finds your mod, uh, there's defined states that happen. So, um, there's a, a large number of them, and if you are interested in the general uh, where they are, I should go back to packages. So, Forge Mod Loader and Minecraft Forge work off a event-driven system. Now, um, it's very powerful, and you'll see uh, you'll see how easy it is to hook into it. So. If you look under CBW Mods FML Common Event, you'll see a whole bunch of different uh, events in here. And this will help in terms of picturing uh, what happens at the different stages. So very first thing uh, for the majority of projects that you'll care about is the pre-initialization phase. The pre-initialization in pre-initialization phase is when Forge Mod Loader comes to your mod and says, okay, now's the time to do things like load your configurations, uh, initialize your network handling, um, set up any key bindings, and very important, this is the phase where you will initialize all the items and blocks for your mod. This is where you'll do that. After pre-initialization, you have initialization. This is where you'll do things like set up your GUI handler and your tile entities and any rendering and any other general event handlers. Uh, this is also where you, you could start registering your recipes. After initialization, you have post initialization. I should actually have been clicking on these as I was going through it. So pre initialization, you can see the different data you get. Initialization and post-initialization. We'll look at those more a little bit in detail in a second here. There's other ones in here. Um, fingerprint violations. This is if you want to check to make sure no one's modified your files. Uh, as well as there's the whole server um, set of things. So the server ones are more if you have like commands or things you want to run specifically on the server side of things. So now let's get into setting up for our, let's just do pre-initialization, initialization, and post-initialization right from the, uh, the get-go. Those are pretty basic ones. So if you want to uh, actually tell Forge Mod Loader that, hey, when you do this, I'd like to actually execute code, you're going to want to subscribe to the event handler. And to do that uh, for this, you will use the event handler annotation. And then right after that, you actually, this is where you'll declare a method. So uh, let's do pre-initialization. There we go. Okay. So you can see here we have a, a void method. Uh, nothing's executed inside of it right now. We've told Forge Mod Loader, hey, this, class, this method here is an event handler method. We've named it pre-init. It can be whatever you want to call it. You could actually have it be the whole pre-initialization, whatever. What is important here 
is the argument. What Forge Model Order will do, it'll come along and say, okay, this thing's an event handler. What event is it handling? And you specify that in the argument here. So here you can say FML pre-initialization event. You can call this parameter whatever you want. The important thing is that you define it as a pre-initialization event here. That's it. So now when your mod is loaded in the pre-initialization phase of Minecraft, Forge Mod Loader will come along and say, okay, now you get to run your code here. Similarly, now we will do it with initialization. So once again, you can probably guess, FML initialization event. I didn't mean to give it two lines. And you know what? Public void. I bet you can guess it's going to be post init. If I could type. And it will be FML post initialization event. This is the basic structure, the backbone framework of what your mod class will be. So once again, in pre-initialization, this is where you will load uh, your network configuration, uh, sorry, your network handling, your mod configuration. Very importantly, this is where you initialize your items and your blocks. Initialization is where you'll do things such as register your GUIs, your tile entities, your crafting recipes, etc as well as any other general event handlers you may have. We'll get more into events, uh, more specific events, uh, events, helpful events later in the series. And post-initialization post is a really good spot to kind of wrap things up. So if you have anything you want to run after other mods have done their initialization, etc. Uh, and that actually brings me to a good point. Forge Mod Loader will come along to every mod it finds and say, here's the pre-initialization event, do what you need to do. Once every mod has had the opportunity to do that, Minecraft leaves the pre-initialization phase and moves into the initialization phase. So you don't need to be worried about a mod, another mod you may be trying to interact with, pre-initializing while you are initializing. Similarly, post-initializing, if your mod is in the post-init, you don't need to worry about another mod you'd like to interact with, only being in the initializing phase. Everyone gets it roughly the same time. No one's faster than the other ones. Very important to know. Something else you'll uh, want to set up inside of your mod class right from the get-go is the ID, idea sorry, of a instance of your mod. So what does that mean? Uh, once again, you can guess there's an annotation for this. It's called instance. And it is a, another Forge mod loader thing. This isn't a method, this is an actual object. It is a instance, a Java instance, of your mod. So it is of the type of this class, I like to call it instance. And we're not quite done here. What this does, uh, and I'll actually specify, this annotation here will take an argument, which is the mod ID of your mod. So it's gonna be let's mod reboot. What this means is if uh, you need to reference back uh, an instance of your mod in your code wherever, you can come back here to this class and reference this static object that is an instance of your mod and use that uh, reliably knowing that no one else has tampered with it or done anything with it. So um, we'll see later on why this is important. For now, uh, I'm just showing you that this is where you define it inside of this class here. It is a safe instance of your mod, uh, and we will use it heavily in the future when we need to reference other things inside of uh, your mod. So, Other than that, uh, this is pretty much the basics of what you need to set up to get your mod loaded into Minecraft. Um, in the next episode, we will touch on the uh, different uh, file structures to put your textures and your resources and assets into. Uh, and then from there, we will start getting into a bit more code. So just to show again, I'll close this library view. You can see here that now we have our Let's Mod Reboot mod class inside of the com Pahamar Let's Mod Reboot package. And that's all set up. And when we run Minecraft, you can actually see the mod gets loaded. 
So, until next time, uh, thanks to you guys for watching, and I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Take it easy.